Hello world. How's everybody this fine, fine day? Uh, may it be a fine day whenever and wherever you are. And if not, it will be soon, right? Things get better, things get worse, but if we pick the part of the oscillation that we like, we get to pick the part of the oscillation that we like. It's pretty cool. Make sure I can see what's going on here. Um, so welcome back uh, to what is now, I've discovered part eight of learning Django by making a tutorial for Django. Um, I, a little bit of review on this. So uh, I did Django a little bit a few years back, was doing a bunch of other stuff and didn't really take, didn't like have time to spend with actually working on it. Um, so then fast forward to now, uh, was trying to pick it back up. Like I'm interested in doing a couple things with it. One of which is uh, I've got this Launchpad website that's a local site on my machine that does various things for me. And it's just a collection of PHP pages. So what I wanna do is because I'm doing more Python now as my main language, I thought it'd be a good idea to flip the site over to Django, rebuild it in Django, and also get all the stuff that Django brings you. Because um, this is just a collection of PHP. There's no framework back behind it or anything. It would be nice to have a framework underneath, hence Django. But I started to go through the Django tutorial, and it just did not click for me. Like, uh, it just didn't click. You can watch the previous seven to see me yelling at it. Uh, the 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 amount of stuff it throws at you without really understanding what's going on feels to me like it was designed by somebody kind of for somebody who already knows what's going on. Um, I have a fair amount of programming experience and I was having problems following it. So I'm trying to come at one uh, with a tutorial that would be a little bit easier for me to understand. Uh, one of the ways I learn things is kind of writing notes as if I'm teaching myself. So uh, I try and figure out a concept and then write the notes back to myself as if I'm teaching myself because that helps me learn. So I'm kind of ramping that up a little bit and writing what amounts to a quick start tutorial the way that I th think would be interesting to do. I'm not sure it's the right way to do it or a better way to do it or any of that because um, I'm actually doing some kind of different techniques in it than I've thought I would when I originally started it. Um, I'm actually going more error driven. So the process I basically follow is do something, see an error, fix the error, see a new error, fix something, see a new error until you actually get something to work. It's kind of test driven development, looking at a red green process at a individual failure level. Um, so this failure is red. We make this failure green, but until we don't actually see anything yet. We just get to the next failure, which is in a red state. And then we make it green. So that failure goes away and then keep moving down and keep moving down and keep moving down. And I really kind of like it. And it's, it, it also, I think if somebody did this for real would have some capability of helping newer, uh, coders be less afraid of errors and realize that errors are your friend and here's how to kind of get into it. Cause that's, you know, the way that we figure this stuff out is by looking at error messages and Googling error messages. So that's where I'm headed with this. Um, and I'm going to walk back through the tutorial as it exists now. And again, it's like tutorial is like the big strong word, right? Whatever. It's just like, these are, it's a, it's a small, t it's a tour tutorial with a small T, not tutorial with a big T. Like I'm not trying to like make a giant thing out of this, but I do want something that you can follow through and, and not just for me, but I can post and have other people, if it helps them, help them. So that's where we're at. Um, so the first thing to do is remember where I put it. Uh, cause it's been, I don't know, a week or so since I messed with it. Um, I really wish. Oh, you know what? I can probably sort this. Okay, we're going to take a real quick side trick. Side track. Um, actually, man ls. So ls gives you the list. LL, I've got alias to ls with the L flag and the H flag. I don't know what the h flag does 
When using the L option, use unit suffixes by its kilobytes. Oh, okay, so it makes it easier. Human readable is what that is. Um, sort. Reverse the order of sorting. Sort by time modified. Use last access. Sort across rows. I want to see if there's... So what I'm looking for is, uh, real quick, I just wanted to see if I can find it. Is I like it's sorting by capital letters and then lowercase letters. I would prefer it to look more like the finder, where if we look at that same directory, like here's some uppercase letter D and a lowercase letter D. Oh, here's Django. That's what we're gonna go look at in a second. Um, I just want to see if I can solve that real quick. Ls lowercase upper case sort. Why aren't capillated letters sort first? Case insensitive LS sorting in Mac. Okay. Might not be possible. Take a look for the source code. It uses some line posting in jet locales and BSD are somewhat broken. Compared to this in Linux, I wrote a quick sorting program in my own which explicitly sets its locale and tested. Okay. This command does not sort dot files, but shows additional directory listings. I got close. It's from 2013. Let's see what happens if we just randomly put this command in. Ooh, I don't like that at all. When I say I randomly put a command in, it's the ls command. Um, though I probably should have looked up and seen what a uh, uh, slash f output is not sorted. This option turns on the a option. Oops. Slash dash a. Include directories whose name begins with a dot. I don't want any of that. I also don't want one. Goodness. It lists all details and sorts them by ignoring case. Download and install Mac ports. I have GNU LS, GLS. All right, what does dash G do? So that's all, so it's all passing flags to LS and LS is not gonna do anything. Um, crazy, like it's not, uh, oops. Enable colorized output. Okay, I don't care about that. What's capital F? Next, 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 okay. Previous, whoops. Oh, you can send a lot to LS. Oh, display a slash immediately after each path name of its directory. Or an at sign at each symbolic link. Okay, so I don't need F or G. L I know is long, A is all. I just want to see what all this does, and then we'll see what happens. This is not sorted at all. Yeah, guard. I had guard in 2017. Um, whoops, that's not really what I wanted to do. Oh, well. Uh... What time is it? 10 minutes. Let's 
stream notes. Um, I may actually mess around with that. So there's absolutely a way to do this. Um, Yes, no, that's just all over the place. Um, could just clear that. See, this is... Somehow there's a way to like pipe all this stuff together and make it happen. Um, uh, I may play one that. Here, let's, let's add that to the list of things to do. Um, I may not do anything actually on this stream. Uh, checklist. Ideas. Build a command to do case intensive sorting, sorting of LS. Some, it's almost certainly already out there, um, but I'll mess around and see if I can build my own too. Uh, which I'll probably, in that process, I'll probably stumble on another existing one. All right, let's actually look at, look at Django now after that brief little detour. Uh, so I think, and we're going to go ahead and start from the start. So I've got... Oh, uh... Well, I'm thinking about it, well, I'm thinking about it, well, I'm thinking about it. I think it's already here. I think I just added it. But Twitch ideas. Build something that caches. Catches. Totally different. Yeah, so I'm thinking about putting up a keyboard camera. Or I'm planning to. But the thing that I realized is if I type passwords, which I only really ever type two passwords the password into my computer and the password into my password manager. And so the type word into my computer it would be hard to deal with, but the one in my password manager, what I can do, I'm thinking, is add a preface to my password that's like a series of junk that's a nunce word, um, that's a, you know, a, a, a thing that doesn't mean anything um, or that wouldn't really exist. So like... I could actually do nunce with a dash. It's what it's the same thing that I do with my um, all, all my envy alt notes. Py dash is not a string that happens pretty much ever, so I get to use that as just a text tag. So I could do the same thing with my password manager, where I take my existing password, preface it with a nunce, and then whenever I type that nunce, have like either a keyboard maestro or text expander or both just for safety like flash something and play sounds so that when that, when that happens i get an alert of just a reminder to say hey you're about to type in your password you're not really showing people where, what you're typing right um so that's kind of where my head's at with that um because that's i would like to do a a keyboard camera i think that would be neat but like I'm nervous about accidentally flashing a pass the you know the password that is the password on my stuff. You'd still have to get my password manager, but if you've got my password, that's you're one step closer to everything. Um, and that's that's no good. So that's what I'm thinking. Uh, anyways, now, now maybe. Might as well update this. 1430 we actually start all right and I got a bail at eight so um, not for a bad thing like uh, there's a game on tonight that I'm looking forward to watching um, so I hope it turns out good and I hope our coach doesn't die because of it uh, so here is so here's the actual thing so far um, and we're going to open that in Sublime Text 2 for editing. Uh, and I, so I'm just going to walk through it and kind of see how it goes. I need to get more things set up 
so I can do this easily. Uh, so here's all my, so TK is to come or to do. So that's stuff I need to do. There's some basics, V2, okay. I'm not gonna make a new Django directory. We've all already done that. We've moved into it. We've already made our virtual environment. Um, let's, let me get that one out of there. The way we can flip back and forth here. Um, so I have SVA, SAV, no. Why am that working? Oh well. Source, bin, bin, activate. And now we can see, oh yeah, you'll see, that's a good thing. You'll see. Command line prompt. If it worked well, that's the the trick with some of this stuff, right? Is you got to say, you'll see this there, but there's always that little caveat of like, if it worked, but you don't want to keep saying if it worked because you kind of lose confidence, I guess. I don't know. Um, you need, well, so really what you need is like a, after every sentence, that is an explanation or a description or whatever. Um, you need like a help button. Um, add help icon after everything with links to help with details. I don't want you. To get, I don't want to give you links. I want to. I want to try and solve it. Uh, put note here about opening second terminal window and also starting up it. Okay, that's kind of the note, but whatever. Uh, so we've already installed Django. Um, but now we're going to make a new one. So actually, I'm going to copy and paste to make sure I've spelled everything right. He says spelling things wrong. Tutorial site uh, 2020-10-17. That, I'm making more of them, so I just want to have them dated. Ooh, is not a valid project name. Gotta be these things, underscores. So this is where just the process of there we go. Uh, well, it's actually, yeah, there we go. Let's create it. Ta-da. Tutorial site 2020. All right. Yeah, there's going to be another tutorial site inside of it, which of course is really tutorial site. Whatever. Um, let's go ahead and open Sublime Text so we can see it here too. this and this so we've got a fighting chance to see this stuff um and this is one that i'm still now on this cd and tutorial site yeah so i'm still trying to figure out if i want to
Yeah. Um. Okay, I think I actually just made that decision. So I, I kept going back and forth. One of the things I struggled with with the official tutorial, and again, it was there's a lot of overwhelm with it, but it it had you run the my the um the run server. And then you saw all the errors and I can't remember when it got back to doing migrate, but it didn't like it felt weird for me. But I think if we say right here, we're going to like. Whatever, be ready. We're about to see your first intentional. Warning, error. So yeah, we can, and this is the trick with one of those. You gotta, you have to find the balance for how much information to give without losing people, either through boredom, through overwhelm, or through disinterest. Um, which I guess boredom and disinterest are close, but because uh, like it, like hey, this is an intentional warning, but like there's warnings and there are errors and those things are different. Like that's maybe not the best time to get into that. Um, but we'll see. Ooh, make it a checklist. Nice. Uh, and with that, so like I'm a big fan of checklists and like, so here's the checklist that I use going into a Twitch stream. So like, make sure the monitor is set up right, make sure Safari is zoomed right, make sure Chrome is zoomed right, make sure Sublime Text has the right text size. So, you know, I just kind of keep going down and down and down. You could do that same approach with this so that, because one of the things that I always struggle with in tutorials is losing my place a little bit. Like, because you're, you're reading something and you're going over here and doing something and you come back and there's some amount of target acquisition, acquisition that has to happen to remember where you are. And if you don't really know what you're doing anyways, that's and you're already kind of whatever. So like, I, I think this is going to be good. Um, oh, you could do. Yeah, so you could do. And I'm sure people have done this before, but like this will be my version of it, like a, a kind of an interactive tutorial. But not just like. I don't know, not just click i mean i guess they kind of i've seen that probably before but i don't know uh, this feels like maybe a thing i don't know we'll look at we'll look at it uh so we've made it let's run the server now uh we installed django oh i should migrate i'll actually i'll do that i'll i'll start migrating this over to checklist um Right, so here's this, and now we're gonna run the server. I think I'm in the right place over here. Yep, there's the migrations. Uh, and so now we should see that. Speedy. Why is that floating up? When I make a new window in Sublime Text, sometimes it goes eight pixels higher and I miss it. The worst thing is, and I've actually expanded the bottom of the screen now a little bit, because the worst thing is sometimes uh, new windows in iTerm will go 
just a little bit too low. And so you can't see me typing. So I've, that's the reason you see the, the lower part there. But I actually do kind of like it. Um, it looks almost like a blackboard. I'm going to put some chat, drop shadow on the other side too. I think it's actually going to look pretty slick. Um, I'm liking it. Anyways. I digress. So we got our server going. Let's see if we can find Sublime Text again. So we checked it out. Now I'll run this command. So now we're going to run our migrate. There's all our migrations. Now, just to prove it worked, run the server again. This time, we won't see the big red warning. Uh, So also to do at the front about what control C is so folks won't hear about it the first time they're trying to use it. I mean, we'll make them use it at some other point. Um, but outside of the Django stuff, like we'll just do like, hey, here's Control C. Check this out. Run. I don't know. Sleep. Is that a command? Yeah, probably. Sleep one. Does that just do one second? Yeah. So run sleep one hundred. And then hit Control C, and then you will see the Control C, and that's how it works. Actually, put that right in there. Whatever, cool. So we got our server going, or we got our migrations going. We did that. We're gonna run the server one more time. Let's grab our server command. Oh, it's still up, but uh, actually, that's an interesting thing you can do. Site is offline. You'll probably run into this again when you aren't expecting it. This is just so you know what it looks like when the server is either stopped or couldn't start. Hmm. You could actually do consider sending folks to before the server starts so they can see it when it's down. Work on that a little bit. Again, I'm just trying to like walk you through like one of the one of the big problems I had with the, uh, the official tutorial and other tutorials. It's not just that one, but it's like this whole thing of like here, do this, 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 and this, and you don't see any changes happening during all that stuff. And then after you make the last change, magically a bunch of stuff starts working. 
it's really hard to connect up in a new framework or in a new thing, what all those individual parts did to get there. Like I know that that blob of stuff made this happen, but ask me to explain it and I'm gonna be at a loss. So I like the idea of showing increasingly like, hey, here's, here's what it looks like before you've done anything. It's broken, it doesn't do anything. Like the page doesn't load, right? Did we kill the server? So like start people out with like here, can't connect. And then like get them excited about the fact that you're about to make a web server happen. You're gonna walk through these few steps. Yeah, so that's actually that's actually really good. You start with the error of there is no server. You can't connect to it. Um, I like that a lot. Definitely do this. One of my favorite websites. And the way that I learned how to spell the word definitely. Let's see if it has it. Oh, I wish it was higher up. Hang on a second. I didn't spell spelling right. Here you go. This is one of my favorite websites. Um, I'm just, I'm messing around a little bit, right? Uh, possibly uh Yeah, I like that one. Sweet. I should add a uh, fave icon to my launch pad. It could be a rocket ship. Oh, I did all that. All right. Pen. Favorites. I don't know why that wasn't already there. Uh, let's bring you over here. All right, let's get back to it. We did all that. Rerun the server. Oh, I just, look, it's the same thing. Um, all right, now we're going to build a home page there and move it to there so that it loads, so that it's the first thing. You know. because it's a homepage. Um, all right, all the wires hooked up. Let's make our own homepage. We're gonna do this in a way that causes lots of errors and address each error as we see it. The other way is to do the other thing. Uh, the way we'll do this is by making a pages module, AKA an, a, an app, and putting it on the homepage, and putting our home, putting the homepage on it, whatever. I'm not gonna super edit right now. I'm just trying to get through the code. Uh, unless I see something glaring, so I'm kind of going through it. Uh, isn't necessarily the way you'll do it. You get grounded.
error messages, whatever. Uh, for now, just follow the directions, get the page running, and we'll go back and walk through all the details, right? So we're gonna first we're gonna start up the server. It's not already running, so we're running. Make sure it's live. Okay. Our first step is to set up the paths to point to the root of our homepage. Our first step is to set up the paths to point the root of our homepage to the path where we're going to put the file. We want to display. That needs edit. Okay, we'll do that later. Um, we do that in this file. Uh, oh crap, you know what? Hang on, let me actually back through this. Um, Was that 2020 10 11? Because what I want to actually do is have the notes be for a tutorial site and have everything explicit. I don't want to mess that up by having a different uh, a different name somewhere. Um, all right, we got we're in. We've got Django, we're in our virtual environment. Uh, here we go. Do that. Do that. Run the server, sure. Make migrations. And then we will actually run it this time to make sure it's live. It's live. Bring it down. Down, okay. Do when you do it fast, you can do it fast. I think that took a minute. Uh, all right, so we've got this going. Now what we're gonna do, we're running the server. So let's get that fired back up. First step is to set up the paths to point the root of our homepage. This is not a good sentence. Uh, we do that in the file, this file. Uh, change this. Okay, so let's get to that file. Uh, we can close that. Oh, we killed that. Okay, that's cool. Over here. So Django tutorial site. Bring that back up. Uh, where am I going? Here. So tutorial site, tutorial site URLs. And just to point it out. It is not a typo. You gotta go the second. Second one as confusing as that is. All right, so there, let's get set up so we can bounce back and forth. So tutorial site, URLs, and then I'm uh, Line two or two, but so encourage people not to copy and paste the first time. Try typing. If it doesn't work the first time, then try. 
Copy pasta. Uh, line two, two ish. So I'm going to copy and paste these because I want to make sure that I've got everything lined up here. Um, so there's that. The command line will freak out and throw an error that ends something like this. Blah, 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 blah. Name include is not defined. Note that the file listed, yeah, is tutorials, tutorials, yeah, so. Yeah, see, so yeah, this is where I'm trying to figure out if I want to go root directory and explain our root directory. Um, I think I do. In my case, Actually, yeah, whatever, root dir, it's fine for now. Just to, like I don't have a good way to get the, that directory stuff set up because it's, that's mine, so. But now we're going to fix that by doing this. Next error. Module not found pages. Got it. The fix. I'm going to have them do... So I need to figure out if I want to have them do two... No, we're just going to do one. We're just going to do one terminal. Um, Also, that the website is down. I'm assuming, right? Error. You got when the website wasn't, when the got before we started. follow the directions. Yeah, this is one where I wish I wish there could be two a single step here that you would do something and then get a failure and then do the next thing, but like there's no there's no good break here for that. Um so we'll just do these two things. And we're just going to add that uh, here. Settings, installed apps, here, there. Let's 
server should already be stopped. word restart start the server again because like restart like is in apache for example restart is a command um oh actually run the server again because the command is run server Hopefully by the time somebody tells somebody to start the server, they will have enough practice that they catch on to the idea that starting is running it. We can say that explicitly somewhere, but again, it's finding that level of detail. Um, stop the web server, then run, which is like run, but you know, running. All right, run the server. Yeah, see, it's funny. I, I look at that and I was like, why didn't I say start? but run the server. Like that helps get the command in your head. Uh, you could say run, run the server again. Sounds like a song. No page is named. You'll see. Yeah, see I was thinking about having two different terminals, but I'm not gonna do that. Um, Like that's kind of an advanced move, right? You could have your server up and running and then you could be running your commands. But like that's, that was not wise thinking. Um, there's your paths, there's this. So it looks like installed app. We'll see our new error. What you could do, so 273, um, what you could do, maybe have a status box at the end of each thing where it shows if the server should be alive. Um, actually, is there a Sublime, well, I'm Sublime Dex too, so I'm gonna completely mess with it. Uh, whatever. Nope. Ah, <laughs> that worked. Okay. Uh, Control G got me there. I've been using Sublime Dex too for years, and that's the first time it occurred to me to try that. Uh, good on it for working out of the box, though. Uh, so see new. Error. Ain't not ain't got no pages, right? So we're gonna make this file. Now the question is <sighs> Yeah, because you could No, I don't want to have to get, I was going to say you could like touch the file or whatever, but like, um, and I kind of, eh, whatever, it's fine. 
uh, where are we going? Tutorial site, tutorial site, pages, URLs. So we need to make a new file with all this jazz in it. And we call this pages urls.py. New module name pages urls, okay. Put a note about pathing. Consider making actual URLs to start with. I don't know what I meant by that. Uh, figure out if you need name homepage now or if you can get away without it. I think you can get away without it. Yeah, so I'm sure I can. So actually, is this one? Hang on. So Same thing's gonna happen if you have if you don't do views, right? It's still circular. Okay, gotcha. So you, I'm trying to figure out the minimum amount of stuff you can do. You could do those circular things, but that's too hard to explain. Like just just throw this in. Um, oh, put a note about pathing. Explain basically what you did at a high level. And this is where because it's tough to explain that without explaining pathing in general. Hmm. I need to think about that. Consider making actual URLs to start with. Uh, I still don't know what I meant by that. Yeah, so you don't need homepage now. Actually, yeah, the errors would walk us through it. So, okay, we're going to get rid of this. Um, that would just be adding name homepage here, which is for the URL stuff, which we're going to want to do, but I want to do that explicitly again. Like, one other problem I had, like, with all the tutorials that I've seen is it just automatically throws that stuff in there. And so later when you're using a, a URL reference, it's like, oh, you're just using this. But it's like, it's so far disconnected in time and space that it doesn't make sense to me. But if you're like, hey, remember this pattern? Go put this here where it says name homepage. And over here where you want to make a URL, put homepage and it calls that connection, right? Cool. Uh, restart the server. Yeah, see, I think I'm going to do control C if you need it. 
No. Run the server. I really should be a lowercase c, right? Everybody always does an uppercase, but uppercase would actually mean hitting the shift, which is a different command. Pages views has no attribute homepage. Great thing about computers is they do the same thing every time. So I did all this crazy crap and I still get exactly the same message. 313. Um, set up to install a specific version of Django. Uh, uh, oh, it's so nice. Fix. All right. So in tutorial site pages. Oh, um, Note that this made a new pages. Uh, Django root, I know it's different. Tutorial site pages directory. A new pages directory at also other stuff in there if we'll get to it later but you can sniff around if you're interested Yeah, so the full file will look like that. Actually, let me paste this one. So come over here, close this one, close this one. Show me views and pages. Let's close this, views. Whoops. So that worked. And then let me just copy and paste all of this, which should be identical. And make sure that still works and it's a 404 again. Okay, yeah. Uh, all right, that's actually gonna wrap it for now. Uh, I'll continue on this next time I come back. Um, Again, this is just the process of refining all this stuff to make sure I've got it. It's getting in my head a little bit more, but I want to make sure as I burn through it, I get set up and I get moved to the same place, and then I can go through and make actual progress. Um, so we'll work on that next time. But right now, I got a game to go watch. So you'll have a good one. Take it easy. And uh, roll tide. See y'all. Bye-bye.